Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Vargles. I have the coolest job in the world because I get to exercise creativity and help people at the same time. The most interesting thing about my job as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon is that plastic surgery isn't all about nose jobs. In fact, the word plastic derives from the Greek word plastikos, which means to change. So really, it's just about changing things that are broken or not working properly. This is where the quadriceps tendon inserts and there'd be a kneecap sitting right here. So on a day when I'm not operating, I would come to the office and to get to the office, I have to walk past the print room. So I open the print door and have a little look and see what the printers have been doing uh, overnight. And then um, carry on through to the office and start my day. This patient has got a surface to the tibia bone, which is angled too much in one direction. And that's caused the, one of the ligaments to just keep rupturing. Um, so what we want to do is adjust the angulation of that. So to do that freehand is very, very difficult. So what we can do to help guide the surgeon's hand is create a guide, which then will sit on the bone. So you can drill the holes in exactly the correct place. And this is why this kind of manufacturing is so good. It's because if you need something that is specific for one person and it's a complex shape, perfect. You know, you can make whatever you want. So, so that's these four here. And then Nicola can just put those wires down yeah. and cut along those wires. Yeah. And then that comes off, that goes down, plate goes on. The most memorable moment in my career was the first time I tried to implant a bioresorbable implant. This is an example of what we were faced with, which was a 36 centimeter defect of bone in the leg of a patient. It's the kind of thing that you'd normally amputate the limb for, and the challenge was to reconstruct that with a 3D printed bioresorbable implant. It was the first time it had been done anywhere in the world. And this was a patient who, two years after that operation, managed to walk again. When I was a little boy, I used to really enjoy fixing things. And in particular, I remember fiddling around with cars with my dad. He taught me a lot of stuff that's actually helped me uh, in my practicing life as a surgeon. Plastic and reconstructive surgery has had a massive impact on society. This was achieved through microsurgery. So the ability to transfer parts of a human being's body from one area to another has been an incredible advance in being able to fix problems that previously were not able to be fixed. But it's also been a huge springboard to achieve other things that we previously couldn't even have imagined, such as being able to work out ways of implanting manufactured organs. Organoids are the manufacturer of small organ-like structures which are self-assembling groups of cells. To create organoids, we use a patient's own blood, extract the stem cells and create the right environment to drive the growth of cells down a particular pathway. And in so doing, produce a group of cells that are self-assembling and representative of the organ systems within that very patient. Organoids are useful for testing a patient's response to particular kinds of medication, in particular chemotherapy, in cancer and epilepsy where the response to drugs can be somewhat unpredictable and we hope that organoids will help us to develop ways of manufacturing organs for reimplantation. As a plastic and reconstructive surgeon, I'm exposed to STEM in every part of my working day life. You know, it's not just a matter of doing an operation on a patient. Uh, usually there'll be a, you know, a scientific reason and some research that's gone into why that operation is the best one for that particular patient. We're using instruments that are highly advanced in terms of their uh, technology. Uh, anatomy is key. An understanding of the pathological basis of disease is also really important. But there are engineering principles. Also need to have a good understanding of chemistry and physiology. And then, of course, there's the psychosocial aspects as well. Have to have a good understanding of psychology and how patients behave under any given circumstance.
The process of addressing a complex problem for a patient usually begins with a referral from a specialist of one kind or another. We then assemble the expertise that's required to address that problem. That includes an engineer, a specialist from a range of medical disciplines and some junior doctor support staff. From there we can make a plan and work out how we're going to address the problem and what might be available to solve it. What motivates me is the complex problems that patients present with. Um, these are people who are really struggling with something and the idea that I could hopefully make their lives better um, really drives me to look for solutions to complex problems. My advice to anyone who wants to pursue a career in medicine and research is don't pass up any opportunities to learn more. Even if it doesn't seem immediately relevant to what you're doing and what you want to do, it broadens your experience and opens your mind. It'll make you better at whatever it is you end up doing. I went to the University of Queensland where I got my medical degree. I then worked as a junior doctor for a couple of years to take some time to settle on a specialty and then started my specialist training in plastic and reconstructive surgery. I trained all over the country. Now I'm the clinical director of the Herson Biofabrication Institute and the director of the Australian Centre for Complex Integrated Surgical Solutions. As we look into the future to see what a doctor might look like, we see there's a convergence of engineering and medicine. There's a lot of engineering principles that have profound relevance in medicine but also you find engineers who are just drawn to some of the challenges that medicine and surgery present. The ultimate question for me is how do we manufacture organs and be able to safely implant them into patients?